Grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the ordained minister in placement at St. Luke's Uniting Church in Highton. The Psalms are the prayer and song book of the people of Israel. And the writer of Psalm 17 in the opening lines doesn't sort of begin with niceties, but really cries out to God. O Lord, hear my plea for justice. Listen to my cry for help. I think many of us can relate to this at the moment. As the COVID-19 crisis continues and as things seem to be getting worse in Victoria, our prayers are very much about calling out to God in our time of need. So I invite you to share with me in a prayer, a prayer which is a prayer of calling out. Let's pray. O God, hear our cries for help. Hear us as we call out with our own needs and the needs of our community in these days. For we know you to be a God who in Jesus shows compassion for all. Compassion for those who are hungry for food and healing. Compassion for those who seek hope and true peace. Compassion for those who are seeking a firm foundation for living. Assure us that you are close in these days that have been uh, impacted by COVID-19. Days of lockdown, days of anxiety, days of uncertainty, days of illness, days of distancing from others. Enable us to receive your life-giving ministry, however and from whomever it comes. For you do provide for our true needs, sometimes in the most surprising ways. Forgive us when we have been content to try to do this living business all by ourselves, thinking that we are the centre of our own universes. Forgive us when we have ignored your blessings in your call to, to be there for others. Forgive us when we have sought to fill our lives which, with those things that do not fill the, the deep hunger within it, each of us. Help us to hear your good news that your overflowing mercy is available for us, that you value each of us and you offer to each of us that bread which feeds our souls with forgiveness and steadfast love. And we offer this prayer in the name of Christ. Amen. Greetings to you wherever you are watching this video. And our hearts go out to you, especially if you're watching this video from the context of being isolated in a nursing home, or perhaps you're not well, or perhaps you're isolated at home because of your own sense of vulnerability, or perhaps you're awaiting with some anxiety the results of a COVID-19 test. Today we're going to explore the significance for us of an event in the ministry of Jesus that is reported by all gospel writers. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. So clearly, this is an event that was very important to the life of the early church. And that event is Jesus feeding a huge gathering of people. By the way, the importance of Jesus feeding many is further underlined by Matthew and Mark, who both describe a second occasion on which Jesus feeds many, many people. Now the challenge for those of us who hear this passage in modern times is to try to not get too hung up on how Jesus did it. How he fed 5,000 men and who knows how many women and children. Because that's the tendency to just get focused on how did he do it. Because focusing on how he did it runs the real risk of completely missing some of the key elements of this story. So listen carefully for what Matthew's description of this event teaches us about Jesus, about God, and about the calling of the church today. The passage begins with Jesus re re receiving news about the death of his cousin, John the Baptist, who's been murdered by Herod. Matthew chapter 14 verses 13 to 21 the feeding to 5,000 now when Jesus heard this he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself but when the crowds heard it they followed him on foot from their towns when he went to shore he saw a great crowd 
and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the village and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to the heaven and blessed and broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces. Twelve baskets full, and those who ate were about five thousand men, beside women and children. Amen. There's so much in this text that we could explore if we had the time. For example, there are connections being made with other parts of Scripture. Uh, clearly, for example, we are meant to be reminded through this account of the crowds being fed in the wilderness of another time, long ago, when the people of Israel were on that long journey to the Promised Land. And in that situation in the wilderness, were fed through the grace of God, were fed with bread, were fed with manna. And the language of this particular passage reminds us too of the kind of language that Jesus used at the Last Supper and therefore the kind of language that we use when we celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist. Did you hear that connection? In, in, particularly in these words, Jesus looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples. But in the little bit of time we've got today, I want to focus particularly on the response of Jesus to the needs of the crowd. Now, even though Jesus had sought to be by himself to pray and grieve following the death of his cousin, John the Baptist, in fact, the murder of his cousin, John the Baptist, at the hands of Herod, the crowds kept coming. They followed him out into the wilderness. And instead of telling them to go away and just let him be, he is concerned for them. He has, as it says in the text, compassion on them. Now, this English word compassion literally means to suffer together with, to suffer together with. Jesus had compassion on the crowd. Jesus' response to the crowd was to genuinely enter into their needs. Jesus' response came from his heart. Now, this is real grace. This is healing in itself to enter into someone else's suffering. And we know this, don't we, from our own experience. When we're in need, when we're going through a hard time, there is something powerfully healing in the gift of a person coming to us to really be with us in whatever pit or difficult situation we find ourselves. There is healing in someone really entering into our situation. And Jesus did that for the crowd. He responds to the fact that many of them are sick and he seeks to bring healing. Matthew uses the word cure to those who are sick amongst the crowd. And if you read through the Gospels, you will see, of course, that Jesus often engaged in a healing ministry. And the Christian community, of course, has continued to do likewise ever since. It's interesting to note in this time of COVID-19 that in the plagues that beset the Roman Empire in the years after Christ's life on earth, many Christians stayed in the cities rather than fleeing as the Roman leadership did and ministered to their own and to others who were ill. And of course, over the centuries, Christians have been instrumental in the development of uh, organized hospitals, often initially being run by religious orders. And then in terms of Jesus responding to, to people's needs in the text, in the crowd's needs that we hear about in the text, Jesus, of course, responds to the fact that many of the folk are hungry. And rather than sending them back to their, 
their homes or somewhere else to get some food, he organises to ensure that they are fed. Fed by being offered true hospitality. Um, the crowd were invited to sit for a meal and they received more than enough to eat. And notice the passage is very explicit that all were fed. Nobody was excluded and there was food left over. Jesus effectively said to all of those folk, please stay, enjoy the feast. There's plenty for all. Notice also that the disciples were involved in this. Uh, they shared in his ministry. They shared in this hospitality. The disciples served the crowd and collect the leftovers. And again, of course, the church has been doing that ever since. Christians have continued to do likewise. They have sought to alleviate poverty and hunger, sought to offer hospitality to all and sundry. As we think about these uh, COVID impacted days that we're living through, perhaps it feels like we are a bit like that crowd out in the wilderness. But as Jesus was there for the crowd in the wilderness, he is here for us, showing compassion, suffering with us. This is the kind of God we worship, sisters and brothers. One who is present with us in the places of darkness, despair and uncertainty, as much as the times of celebration and sunshine. And as Jesus responded to the sick in the crowd, he is aware of our needs and wants, our fears and anxieties. And while he's physically not present in the same way that he was back in that situation where, it, where the multitude were fed, Still healing comes, healing comes. Maybe this healing comes from the expertise of a medical professional or the kindness, the prayers, the reassuring words of a faithful friend or a family member. And as Jesus felt the hunger of the crowd, so he experiences our hunger, whatever form that hunger takes. Of course, hunger for enough to eat is, is a common thing still, unfortunately. So many people still don't know where their next meal's coming from. But perhaps that hunger is hunger for hope, or hunger for peace, or hunger for comfort. Remember the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, which we use so often, includes the phrase, give us today our daily bread. And we believe that he does give us that bread the bread that sustains us even when all our own resources have run out. Our own cupboards may be bare, but the love of Christ can never be exhausted. Jesus is with us in the wilderness, this wilderness. He has compassion for us. He heals and feeds us. Listen again to a few phrases from this wonderful text. Then Jesus ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. Let's share now in that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Let us share in the Lord's Prayer. Aer mer vor herginesis, sur pieriti anunco, egesce arcaetiunco, eritin gamco, vor des herginis ye hergri, zhats mer hana bazort, dur mezaisor, tor mezis bardis mer, vor bes ye mek torunk merots bardavanats, ye vnidan irismes i portutun, aer pergia i charen. Good morning, everyone. Our prayers of intercession today are based on a prayer written in this time of COVID-19 by the Reverend Dr. Paul Douglas Walfall, who's a minister of the Uniting Church in Canada. Let us pray. Holy God of deep compassion, 
as we continue to live in this time of responding to the pandemic of COVID-19, we come asking for strength and grace. It is not easy for us to live in a state of physical distancing. We particularly struggle with being separated from loved ones. Give to us the strength and love needed to keep each other safe. Give us the love that will seek to do the highest good for those who are vulnerable. Give us the grace to seek for new ways to be social, even as we keep distance from each other and wear masks. When we feel overwhelmed and unable to go on, provide for us the brother or sister who will be your channel of grace for that moment. We remember and are grateful for medical professionals, researchers, leaders in governments and in all areas of community life, who even now continue to work for our health. Give to them the gifts they need to do their work. Give to them the strength to continue when things are hard. Give to them the energy when the day is long. Keep them and those they love in your safe keeping. We know that you stand with all people who have tested positive for COVID-19. Give to them the peace that comes from knowing that you are with them. Calm their anxiety, comfort them in their distress and assure them and their families that you will neither leave them nor forsake them. Holy One, we sense that this is a marathon and not a sprint. So assure us that we are not alone and that you have promised to provide the things that we really need, things which will sustain us, bread that is the eternal life. Help us run this race with perseverance, mindful that you journey with us. Be with all and bring your healing to all whose cries and needs weigh heavy on our hearts. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. In the last video we reflected on Jesus' parable of the yeast. How a little of something so small can make such a huge difference. How a small amount of yeast can leaven a whole batch of dough and lead to the formation of that wonderful thing that we enjoy, at least most of us are able to enjoy, bread. And uh, of course, we've just heard it, that story about Jesus feeding the 5,000 with bread and with fish. So it occurred to me that perhaps these texts might encourage you to do something practical and uh, have a go or have another go at making some bread at home. And maybe you could involve the younger people in your family in this. Just a thought. Friends, take care in these difficult times and re remember that God is a God of compassion. As Jesus had compassion on the crowd, he has compassion on us in our current context, in our current wilderness. And hear the words of Desmond Tutu as words of real hope. Go in peace and remember goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Amen. And some words of blessing. Words that are very ancient and attributed to the brother of Moses, Aaron. The Aaronic blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.